Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but, but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed hallelujah thank God for Calvary guaranteed our salvation guaranteed our healing guaranteed our deliverance today I speak quickly on the subject basis for divine healing. Basis for divine healing. We'll be understanding divine healing first. Understanding the causes of ill health. Second, and understanding the scriptural basis for divine healing. Third, understanding divine healing, understanding the causes of ill health, understanding the scriptural basis for divine healing. Divine healing is confirmed by scriptures and verified by contemporary testimonies is verified. We heard this morning and we keep on hearing about who and who God is healing. Question is, what is divine healing? One, divine healing is the restoration of the body to the state of health and vitality by the power of God. The restoration of the body to the state of health and vitality by the power of God. Restoring the body. Number two, Divine healing is the recovery of the body from the state of ill health or disease by the power of God. The recovery of the body from a state of ill health or disease by the power of God. At first, when the body is restored to health, we say a person is healed. And then when a person recovers from ill health, we say the person is healed. Thirdly, divine healing is the repair of damaged body system. Repair of damaged body system or organ by the power of God. When a damaged part of the body is repaired, by the power of God. It is called divine healing. So, first of all, it is the restoration of the body to the state of health and vitality by the power of God. Then, it is the recovery, divine healing is the recovery of the body from the state of ill health or disease by the power of God. And thirdly, it is the repair of damaged system or organ by the power of God. Now, there are dimensions of divine healing which I will mention. What dimensions of divine healing do we have? 
Number one is the reversal of disease process. The reversal of disease process. That is a dimension of divine healing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He went about reversing the process of disease in the, in the lives of the people. That is a dimension of divine healing. Reversing disease process. Number two is the rebuke and release of afflicting spirits. The rebuke and release of afflicting spirits. We notice occasionally that spirits are behind certain illnesses. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 where we read, he said he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So when the devil behind the disease is rebuked and released, that is a dimension of healing. Luke chapter 4 verse 38 to 39. Jesus arose out of the synagogue. He entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her. That is, the fever carried something that was rebukable. Was rebukable. So, divine healing happens by the reversal of disease process and then the rebuke and the release of afflicting spirit. Number three, the repair of damaged body part. The repair of damaged body part. Body part that is damaged, when it is repaired, it is a dimension of healing. In John chapter 4 verse 52, when Jesus healed the nobleman's son, he inquired of them the hour when he began to amend. Amend means, you know, to mend something, to repair something. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So healing is a mending process, a repair process. It is the repair of damaged body part that is a department of healing. Number four is the replacement of destroyed body part. The replacement of destroyed body part. You know the way vehicles have spare parts. God also has spare parts for human bodies. The replacement of damaged body part. Somebody might need a new kidney like we have seen before or need a new liver or a new organ. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 30 to 31. Matthew 15, 30 to 31. A, and a great multitude came unto him, having with them those that were lame, those that were blind, dumb, maimed. You know the meaning of maim? That word maimed means that maybe they lost a hand or lost a leg or lost something. They were maimed and many others and cast them at Jesus' feet and he healed them. In so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, they maimed to be made whole, which means that the missing body part was restored. The lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. If you look at another translation, can you give me the New Living Translation or the, the, the Living Bible? A, a, a vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who couldn't speak, and many others. They laid them before Jesus and he healed them all. And the crowd was amazed. Those who, had be, who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The crippled were made whole. The lame were walking. And the blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. Can you get, get the verse? The next verse. When the people saw the mule speaking, they maimed healthy. The paraplegics walking around, the blind looking around, they were astonished. One translation, I think it was the Living Bible, it said, those with missing body parts got new ones. With missing body parts. You see that Living Bible or the, or the Amplified. So, in healing, 
God gives, replaces destroyed body organs. Finally, is restoration to original state. Restoration to original state. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 14. When Naaman the Syrian was healed, the Bible said he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. He became how it was before. So we have the reversal of the disease process. We have the rebuke and the release of afflicting spirits. We have the repair of damaged body parts. We have the replacement of destroyed body parts. And we also have restoration to original state. Having said that, what is it that makes people to need healing? What are the causes of ill health? What, what, what gives rise to the need for healing? Causes of ill health. What necessitates the admi administration of divine healing? Number one is enemy attack. What we call affliction or oppression. Attacks from the enemy. Acts 10 38 told us Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So outright attack of the enemy can produce disease. Luke chapter 4 verse 38 to 39 we already saw how Jesus rebuked a fever. That fever had got to be a spirit for it to be rebuked. We saw that already then. Psalm 107 verse 20 he said he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So, situations where someone got confronted, attacked by an evil spirit, it can cause ill health. Number two is sinful activity. Sinful activity. Psalm 107 verse 17. He said fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Because of their transgression and their iniquities are afflicted. Psalm 119 verse 67. Psalm 119 verse 67 he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I was afflicted. I went astray. But now, I have kept your word. So to go astray is to attract affliction. You see, in Psalm 103 verse 1 and 2, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and then healeth all thy diseases. So, iniquities at times are accompanied by diseases. He forgiveth your iniquities, then heals your diseases. No wonder they brought a man to him in the book of Mark chapter 2. The man was carried by four people. I'm sure you remember the story where there was no room and they brought the man through the roof and dropped him before Jesus. In verse 5, instead of Jesus saying you are healed, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick, son, thy sins be forgiven. They brought a sick person and you are talking about sin. Why? Because there, would be a, there is a connection between sin and sicknesses under certain conditions. That was why he said in James chapter 5 verse 14 to 16. James 5. Very important scripture. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. Shall save the sick. 
and in case he committed sin, if sin was responsible for this sickness, they shall be forgiven. Uh, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Now verse 6 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Confess your sins that ye may be healed. Is God speaking to somebody here? That, for example, a person who is a chronic drunkard is permanently signing for liver cirrhosis. He's signing for alcoholic carditis. He's signing for dementia. He's signing for all manner of afflictions. A person who is a chronic smoker, that is signature for bronchiogenic cancer, lung cancer, an immoral person is looking for HIV, looking for hepatitis, A, B, C. Is looking for, for hepi simplex virus. Am I communicating at all? And so on and so forth. And it doesn't matter how anointed the person is. If that guy remains a drunkard, a sinner, a liar, he cannot be healed by the power of God. So, sinful Activity. The number one thing is the enemy attack. Number two is sinful activity. Number three is negative emotion. All right, before I go to negative emotion, let's take Personal negligence or carelessness. Personal negligence or carelessness. First, enemy attack. Second, sinful activity. Third, personal negligence or carelessness. That's Psalm 107 verse 17 where we read. It said, fools because of their transgression." And because of their iniquities. Now, he's, there is a difference between the transgression and the iniquity. The transgression is the breaking of the law. The iniquity, of course, is sin against God and its consequence. Any law that is broken, that is a correct law, is a transgression. He said, fools, because they break laws and because they offend God, they are afflicted. Am I communicating? So there are natural laws that when broken can bring affliction or sickness. Acts chapter 27 verse 34. Acts 27 34. Wherefore I pray you. Paul the apostle was talking to those who were with him. I beg you to take some food. For this is for your health. The people were in problem and they were not eating anything. He said, take some food. For there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. Somebody say aloud, amen. So, personal negligence or carelessness. When natural laws are broken, the consequences can be ill health. For example, when people neglect hygienic <laughs> hygienic practices. I, I will never forget my project of 600 level medicine and it was 500 level microbiology project and we went to the market side to take food that has already been prepared and the plate that was already prepared. I'm sure this will not scare somebody. And we took it to the laboratory to culture and find out what was available there. Whoosh. I said, it is in that kind of condition where God will say, those who eat deadly things, it shall not hurt them. The market side near the hospital. And we took plate already washed, ready to serve food. And we cultured streptococcus fecalis. Bacteria that is found in excreta. <laughs> that 
thing shook me. Young uh, uh, medical student. Wow! This is. Madame, give me food there. And this is there, right there. The other day I told my wife, I said it is because of those kind of conditions that God says if they eat deadly things, because you are not the one who put it there, so you wouldn't know. That is how we are protected. But when people don't observe hygienic practices, it can bring ill health. Somebody takes off his shirt in the middle of winter in January in, um, in, in New York or in December in, in England and he said, I am anointed of God, cold cannot affect me. He should be ready to get admitted in the hospital of, 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 of very acute pneumonia that can progress to anything else. When somebody takes excessive sugar or excessive Coca-Cola, excessive Fanta, he, he will not have diabetes, he would have diaphantas or diacokies or diasugris. All the dias. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is negligence. Even the right thing applied in excess becomes a cause. There are people who it is just fried foods and excessive fatty things and excessive fatty everything and their bodies get filled with polyunsaturated fatty acids that attack the heart and deal with their system. Many times if it was not the attack of the enemy and it was not sinful habit at times it will be personal negligence or carelessness. Number four is negative emotion. The state of your mind affects the state of your health. Negative emotion. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22. It said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth up the bones. Excitement brings vitality. Depression invites disease. That's the, that's the meaning of that scripture. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth up the bones. Then in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30, he said, a sound heart, where a man is happy, excited, is the life of the flesh. But envy is the rottenness of the bones. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. He said, looking diligently, in case any man fail of the grace of God, in case any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Those negative emotions, there are those who enjoy depression. They enjoy being in despair. No, don't enjoy. Life is worth living. Negative emotions of envy. There are those who cannot stand the success of others. They, it, it pains them that they are not the ones. Negative emotions of bitterness. Somebody offended you 20 years ago is still in your mind today. You are laughing physically, but you are bitter inside. These things. These things, they break down the body. And in those cases, it is not the devil. That is why number one was enemy attack. After that enemy attack, most of the other things are just, apart from the last point I'm about to mention. So, personal negligence and then negative emotion. And number five is what I call inherited liability. Inherited liability. Ancestral stroke, parental transfer.
First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. That word vain is profitless. Empty. Conversation is character mannerism. You were not redeemed with silver and gold from your profitless, call it hand downs, that was received from your fathers. Do you know there are many things that come through the bloodline? Am I communicating? It is part of the fall, but it happens. Abraham, Jacob had Rachel and Leah as wives. Both of them were barren until God opened the womb of Leah when he saw she was hated. That was Genesis 29, 31. See, both were barren. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, which means the womb was closed. But Rachel was barren. That was Jacob. Then you trace it back to Jacob's father, Isaac, whose, whose mother was also barren. Genesis 25 and in verse 21. You see? And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was in treat of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Then you trace it back again to Abraham, whose wife is Sarah, their father was also barren. Genesis chapter 11 verse 30. You see, the Bible said, but Sarah was barren. She had no child. These are negative transfers. Negative, negative transfers. You know, I told you some time ago, medical doctors, there is, I'm sure there are doctors here. Can you wave your hands? When a patient comes to you, and you are seeing the patient, the first thing you do is called history taking. You want to know the history of the disease. What's your name? What's your, uh, what do you do? Where do you walk? What happened? And he's telling you the history. Oh, five days ago, something, something, something. And then you begin to ask a lot of questions. Oh, this kind of cough you have, how was it? How does it sound? Do you bring out something? What's the color of what you bring out? Is there blood stain in it or something? And you keep on asking. Then there is a segment to call family and social history. If you perceive that, the, what kind of sicknesses do, do you have in your family? Was your father hypertensive? What of your mother? Was your father diabetic? What of your mother? Is there any history of insanity in your family? And you are taking history. The reason why they take family and social history is because certain things run in families. Fathers who are hypertensive most times, if their children don't take, take time, it can flow through their bloodline. And that is why we take authority by the blood of Jesus against this kind of things. Somebody say it loud, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you, see, you see the things run like that. So inherited liabilities. All these things, but thank God, this point number five is handled in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us for it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Somebody say amen. All these five reasons are the why of healing. Why healing is necessary. What brought the sickness that causes the need for healing? And finally, as we begin to round off, what then is the basis for divine healing? If we have seen how the ill health comes, what is the guarantee that we can be healed? Number one, God the Father identifies himself as the physician of his people. He identifies himself, I am a physician and I am ready for you anytime. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, Exodus 15 26 he said, 
if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am your Jehovah Rapha. I am your repairer. I am your tailor. I am the one who mends you. So he identified himself. Number two. God the Father promised his people restoration for their health as often as it, is, as it will be needed. He promised his people restoration of health as often as it will be needed. That was why we read in Psalm 103 verse 1 to 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgiveth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all your iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. That is present, continuous. He healeth. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word and healed them. And deliver them from all their destructions. And of course, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah 30, 17. For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh. I will restore health unto you. I will heal you of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Can somebody say aloud, amen? This is, this is our basis. Somebody say, but this is in the Old Testament. Is there something in the New Testament? Yes. Number three. The master Jesus was identified, or rather, let me say, is his present. The master Jesus is identified as the healer. Because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. According to Hebrews 13, 8. The master Jesus is identified as the healer. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He is identified as the healer. He's, he healed yesterday, he's healing today. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 14, we read how the, Jesus went forth, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. The Father is healing you. The Holy Ghost, the, sorry, the, the, the Master Jesus heals you. And then number four, the Holy Spirit is identified as channel of divine healing. Channel of divine healing. Jesus went about, Acts 10, 38, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? God was with him and how? He was anointed by the Holy Ghost. To heal. Mark chapter 6 verse 13. When Jesus sent his disciples out, they cast out many devils and anointed with oil. Many that were sick and healed them, anointed with oil. What is in the oil? It is the Holy Spirit. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. When Samuel anointed David with oil, the Spirit of God came upon him. So the oil transmits the Holy Spirit. Right? So the Father is healing. The, 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 the Son is healing. And the Spirit of God is healing. And there is no hiding place for the enemy. Say Amen. Finally, what is basis for healing? The fifth is the church leaders. have a God-given responsibility for the healing of the sick in church. 
the church leaders have a God-given responsibility for the healing of the sick in the church. If God will not heal the sick, he won't tell the elders and the leaders to anoint the sick. In James chapter 5 and in verse 14, James chapter 5, he said, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray for him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven him somebody say a loud amen already in the, in the middle of the week we saw how Jesus died on Calvary and that guarantees our health even today we have read that passage what is the conclusion number one Divine healing is both a possibility and a reality today. It's a possibility, it's both a possibility and, real, and a reality today. Two, every avoidable cause of ill health must be avoided for the sustenance of healing and health. Every avoidable, carelessness, negligence, and so on, every avoidable cause of ill health must be avoided for the sustenance of healing and health. Can't keep on drinking, smoking, living carelessly and trust God to be in health. It's not possible. And finally, strong faith for healing and health must be developed through the possession of scriptural revelation. Strong faith for healing, divine healing and health must be developed through the possession of strong scriptural revelation and conviction. The kind of message you, the kind of message you are listening to now, the type we're listening to on Wednesday and through the month, these messages. You, you, you listen to them until they do something inside you. Until faith is built for health and healing. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. The Bible said he sent forth his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. While this world has been coming, healing has already happened. Hallelujah. I saw you with the collar there. The camera picked you. Can you stand up, ma'am? And step forward quickly. Is there any other person in that category? In that likeness? Someone with a stick, with a knee problem, or a knee ankle, something about knee or ankle. Anyone like that with a stick but has a, a pain or an affliction on the ankle, walking like this. You have the stick, the stick, you have the stick. When I say someone like that, I mean somebody who came also with a collar on the neck. And then I'm talking about somebody with a stick and a knee. What happened to your neck, man? Oh, lumbar spondylosis. Then from there, I think maybe the cervical went in some part. Lumbar spondylosis that now affected the cervical. I'm talking about somebody with a stick and then somebody with a neck like this. Otherwise, the rest can remain on their seat and I'll pray for them there. Lift up your hands, ma. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this affliction. Wow. 
power of the Holy Ghost. Father, I ask that you will fix the back. Fix the back. Fix the back. Fix the cervical bones and fix the backbone and let the healing be wrought. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Master. If your body suffers pain and your heart you can't regain and your hope is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the way you feel. He can help and he can save. Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your hope is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the way you feel. He can help and he can save. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Mother, can you check your neck right now? Do what you couldn't do before. Look up. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you all. Take your body to the Lord and leave it there. Come, mother. That's your mother. Come, ma. Come. So what, 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 what is paining you? Tell us what happened. She had a knee replacement surgery. Knee replacement surgery. Before then, she woke up one morning and realized that she had pain on that leg and it lingered until they had to go and, and do the knee replacement. Incredible. God will perfect your healing now. Lift that stick up, ma. Lift this stick up. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this mother. Bye. It's a lifted at Calvary. 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 Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very nice. Is healed. Mama, lift your leg up. Do what I'm doing. Do as I'm doing. Do as I'm doing. Lift it higher up. Higher up. Jesus' name. Mama, walk on there. 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 Just go ahead. Keep walking. Mama, come forward. What was wrong with that mother? About three years now, Mama has been diagnosed of um, uh, diabetes and stroke, and she's not been able to bend her knees to lift walk it with up, her lift knees. the stick. Jesus' name, power of the Holy Ghost, come upon that mother and let her leg be healed. Let the pain disappear. Let the stroke disappear. Let the affliction disappear. In the name of Jesus. What happened to you, sir? Come, lift your hand. Just hold on to your Come. Two Mama, years ago. Stand. Powerful. Lift your leg up. Good. That's right. Hold the stick. Mama, you won't hold it. Walk onto the altar. Walk onto the altar. Move on to that altar there. Mama, walk faster, 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 faster. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. She doesn't want the stick anymore. She's walking right there, stroke and diabetes. Are you just looking like that? 
accident is since last year. She can't walk. It's my neighbor. Oh God, oh, oh Toby. Give the Lord a oh, praise. Oh God, oh my God, do I hear Oh God, oh God, oh, oh Toby. Five years ago, he had an accident and then did a knee replacement surgery after that. And since then, he's not been able to use that leg without the aid of a stick. Wow, come closer here. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. That knee that could not move. Father, let it function. Oh, the knee is making very serious cracking sound like it has no fluid in it at all. Take this up. Down. Take this up. Oh, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because it is flexible. Thank God. Stand up. Walk on, walk without it. Are you just looking like that? Tell the Jew of our being in love behind him. Tell the Jew of our dead man. Tell the look and 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 look today. Stretch your hands. Father, let your power touch this lady. This witchcraft attack that broke the two legs at once. We turn back to hell. Oh! <sighs> power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Are you just look, show the leg, just show the leg first. See. Ay, 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 ay,
coming to church this morning. I saw her when I was coming to church this morning. She was crossing the front of my vehicle. The movement was nothing near this at all. You brought her. You brought her. She knew, yes, yeah, she knew I'm the member of this church, so she sent for me to bring her to church. She's coming here for the first time. Let me tell you something. I had the compound fracture when I was 12 years old. Yes, I remember. I had it. Her movement was not near this thing. I didn't believe she can even walk like this. Listen, based, based on my medical knowledge, collecting a crutch from this kind of person, you are looking for more fractures. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> Apart from faith, inside your heart, there is some little caution. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Girl, dance and come and sit on this chair. Celebration. <laughs> Since 2008, sir. Since 2008. Yes. This pelvic fracture. Yes, sir. Had multiple fracture on the leg. They tried it all manner. Yet, it was not impressed. And now the miracle has begun. Miracle. Eh? Could not shake this. This leg was not moving at all. This wasn't moving at all. This leg wasn't moving at all. Pelvic fracture that confined her to a wheelchair. And then spinal, spinal cord. cord injury. Yes, sir. What a mighty God. Walk on, walk on, walk on. Something just happened. She ran out to celebrate your miracle. She ran out to celebrate your miracle. Somebody celebrate. Are you just... Listen, listen. Listen, people. In the next five minutes, if you are going to dance like you haven't done before, Possible shall be made possible. 
in your life. Celebrate the king. Let's go. Wait, 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 wait. I need a very heated dance. Let the drum beat be heavier than that and then shift fire. If you came here, anything that followed you from your father's house, from your mother's house, from your lineage, from your family, every oppression, every affliction is leaving you alone now. Shout the loudest amen. why she's walking like that. Who is this? You come together. You come together. Yeah. When you come, what will happen? The time when you come, I see you walk out with this one, you hold me for hand. Before we he walk out with this one, hold you for hand yeah. again. Before we enter. That's how she used to walk. Yes. She will hold the stick on one side and another person on the other hand. Now he stand by himself. Bring it. Go on, go on, go on, go on. 
She said she must. The violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. On one hand and another person on the other hand. One stick on one side, somebody holding the other side. From the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Is this your own? All right, congratulations. I saw how terrible this woman walked when she was coming out. And now God has touched her. You are all going to walk back and dance back to your seat. The rest of us today, now not for walking now, for your shoulder. The rest of us who are going to take your miracles by force. You may not have a sickness in your body, but maybe there is a sickness in your business, a sickness in your marriage, a sickness in your destiny. Lift your hands and begin to make demands on your healing, your deliverance, your liberty. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She too is walking, walking. Oh. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and begin to take your miracle by force. Father, I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my open door. I receive my change of story. Open your mouth and speak.